this is Doug from the Flat Earth Workshop. Today's topic, the heroes of Apollo 1. Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee. Three men who gave their lives for the visit to the moon. Project Gemini had just concluded with the last flight, Gemini 12, of Jim Lovell and Buzz Aldrin. It was so successful, there was one of the Gemini flights that had been canceled to make way for Apollo. Go Fever was sweeping NASA. They had been so successful up to this point with McDonnell Aircraft making both the Mercury and Gemini spacecraft, they decided to move over to American for construction of Apollo. In retrospect, a lot of the expertise also stayed with McDonnell, as Americans strived on their own to make a new Apollo spacecraft. The original flight of the first Apollo was originally called AS-204, but then changed to Apollo 1. It was scheduled to be launched in late February of 67. On this day, January 27th of 1967, the crew is shown here getting on board for what seemed to be routine testing. This day of testing would go tragically wrong. It even started out on a bad note as the astronaut secretary remembered all three astronauts being very tentative about the testing that was to go on that day. So as they got into the spacecraft and began to try to communicate, nothing was working. FPC, CFPC. Okay, Gus, uh, you guys ready to pick up now? It's on and set. Hearing copy, Ed. It is on and set. Hey, how are you going to get to the moon if we can't talk between three buildings? I can't hear that thing you're saying. Commander Gus Grissom was one of the original seven Mercury astronauts. After the flight of Liberty Bell 7, the hatch accidentally blew. Gus Grissom uh, then was forced out of the spacecraft and almost drowned, and his spacecraft ended up sinking in the Atlantic. After Gus Grissom's flight, there was a real change of attitude at NASA about the way a hatch should be designed. So when Apollo was created, a very different hatch was designed, which included two different parts, the inner hatch opening inward and the outer hatch opening outward. Strangely enough, that would end in disaster with all three astronauts burning alive inside the capsule. Astronaut Frank Borman was chosen to head up the committee in looking into what went wrong with Apollo 1. Many things were found. Among those, the plugs out test was done under pure oxygen environment. When oxygen is under pressure, almost anything will burn. The investigation indicated that a small wiring problem had caused the fire. It sparked up underneath Gus Grissom's position and spread rapidly throughout the capsule. The capsule pressure reached such high levels that the side of the hull blew out. By that time, it was too late. Oh, I doubt if I have any philosophy towards the danger. I, I recognize that, that uh, there is some risk. Try to take as much of that out, of, out as we can during the pre-testing to make sure the systems are good. We recognize that there are unknowns and things can happen that, that we haven't planned for. Well, I always look forward to uh, flying, and I look forward to test flying. I haven't been in combat, so I can't say that. And in the same manner, I look forward to the, my flight in Gemini 4, and I'm really looking forward to this flight in Apollo. I think that the, the difference people might look at our work as, as uh, being perhaps dangerous or risky of sorts, but I think we train in it and work in it so much that, and understand it well enough that we don't look at it from this viewpoint. And we accept the risks, if there are, what risks there are. And the people we work with uh, do everything that's humanly possible to reduce these risks to as small as possible. Uh, I believe very deeply in the people we work with and the crew. I certainly do. But I think I could be around to fly for 
quite a few more years yet, and as to how far I want to go, I want to go as far as uh, NASA goes in, during my useful time as a pilot to them. Uh, I'd like to go on a moon flight, and if we go to Mars, I'd like to go on that. The loss of astronauts Grissom, White, and Chaffee from Apollo 1 did not end the NASA program at all. As a matter of fact, it caused 10 months later for a redesigned Apollo spacecraft to be launched in Apollo 7. Liftoff. We have liftoff. Slowly, slowly. This is launch control. We have cleared the tower. In late December of 1968, the launch of Apollo 8. Zero. Looks good. We have cleared the tower. Oh, and there's the rumble in our building. Without the sacrifices of Grissom, White, and Chaffee on Apollo 1, Many space historians agree we would have not reached the surface of the moon on July 20th, 1969. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. Now's the time to subscribe to the Flat Earth Workshop on YouTube because very soon we'll be celebrating the astronauts of Apollo 1 by building a 1-6 scale Gus Grissom in an Apollo 1 uniform.